Okay, that's enough. It's 2000. Let's start. Uh, good evening, everyone. This is Longshot Diddy. I will be your lecturer tonight. Welcome to one of my fun nights. Uh, today's subject is uh, Destroyers and Wolfpack Tactics. Uh, most of you were in my Hydra class, and some others has got uh, sufficient experience and uh, covered the requirements to join the class. Uh, during the class, in the first part, I will give you the basic of the tactics and understanding. And the second part, we will head out and try to get some fun. Before losing any more time, let's start. Uh, Wolfpack tactics with destroyers uh, are very similar to uh, Second World War tactic uh, used by Germans with their submarines. Uh, basically, we will use our destroyers to conduct alpha strikes on our targets by using their primary uh, primary properties. And uh, by utilizing these tactics, we will uh, cover and get rid of our weaknesses with the destroyers. Now, uh, this is also a, a tactic and composition. Uh, listed under the Hydra principle. Uh, before we start, let me remind you the rules in my class. Sometimes I direct questions to you, and when I di direct some questions to you, uh, I want to see some Xs who wants to answer the questions. So you can accept in the class channel, and when I call your name, you can either answer to me or write it in the class chat. You don't have to do that. I just want to see your contribution in this class. Okay, I'm sure that most of you are well aware of the Hydra Principle, but I want someone to remind the Hydra Principle. Who wants to remind us the Hydra Principle? Anixis. Come on, don't be shy. Who wants to give us the Principle? Ponteon. Okay, Pontium types that is the principle in which we use spread Ewar and speed to cover fragility and weakness. Uh, Pontium is partially true for frigate uh, fleets and uh, he also said able to cover hulls. Yeah, the principle is uh, similar to this one but it should be more general like uh, in Hydra fleets we use sheer numbers and we focus on the uh, better properties of the ships we use to cover our weaknesses and holes. Uh, in our uh, previous classes, we use frigates, and for frigates, we mostly depend on Ewar to co cover our defense. But now we are with a different hole. The principle is same. We will utilize our numbers, sheer numbers. We will utilize our uh, highest properties of our uh, destroyers. And we will cover uh, our weaknesses by these, uh, these high properties. So, uh, let's first uh, get familiar with our destroyers. Uh, could someone link me a treasure, please? Now, that's enough. Let's look at the uh, properties of the treasure. When you look at the first glance, uh, what are the uh, strengths of the destroyers? I want to see some X's. Kill shot. By the way, you can use mumble to speak to answer the questions. Uh, we get a lot of guns to uh, get a higher alpha. Yes, exactly. That's one of the properties. And another one. There are lots of. Give some mixes, guys. What is the next property? Are you talking just for the Thrasher? For the general of the destroyers, they usually have the same uh, skill bonuses. Lorraine? They, well, building from the number of guns, they pack cruiser-sized alpha for a fraction of the price. Yeah, sure. And more? Anyone got any idea? 
A lot of them get range bonuses. Yes, that's another property. And more, please. Keep going. Yeah, they have a uh, uh, good number of bit slots. I don't count this as a property. Let me give you this one. Uh, you also get nice tracking speed and tracking bonuses. So let's uh, repeat them again. They've got lots of high slots, well, lots of guns. They've got bonus to uh, their third damage. Uh, they've got uh, nice tracking speeds. And there's still one more property that we may uh, count as a bonus, is a better pro uh, property of the uh, destroyer. Could anyone remember one for us as an example? Okay, let me help you. If you move to attributes and look at the targeting part, you will see that their scan resolution is also very high. So they are also fast looking ships. They can fast uh, very uh, They can look very fast. That's also a property of the destroyers. They have got lots of guns. They have got uh, high tracking speed. Uh, they have got bonus to their protect projectile damages. Uh, they have got high uh, scan resolution to look faster. Also, because they are as this is the these uh, followings will be the secondary uh, properties. They are also small and fast ships. And also considerably cheap uh, regarding the other hulls. So these are the main properties of the destroyers. They they are built up to hunt down mostly uh, for frigates. So they are uh, very strong against frigates on one-to-one -one engagements. But if we use sheer numbers and tactics, they may be uh, also very useful in different engagements. So basically, the treasures depends highly on damage tracking, damage and tracking. Uh, so this is their prime property. According to Hydro principle, our prime uh, bonus, our prime uh, strength uh, should cover our uh, biggest weakness. Okay, I can understand that most of you realize this. So. The first thing that our fleet depends on our alpha strike damage. In other words, the first wall of damage. Let's think this way. Uh, with low skills, averagely a destroyer could uh, give 400 damage in a single volley. Now, if we have 30 plus ships, uh, this will be 12 Ks of damage, and this amount of damage in a single shot could will take most of the frigate hulls, including Tech 2s, and uh, will take care of uh, sorry, take care of all the frigate hulls, and can easily uh, melt down almost most of the cruisers in the game, except some factions with very shiny things. Even with your second volley, you will take care of. Uh, nearly the rest of the cruisers in the game. If you go up to the full sizes, uh, this, you will see the efficiency and the strength of the damage potential uh, of a wolf pack with more than 30 ships in its structure. So our uh, first strength is to lock our enemy as fast as we can and uh, take him down with one or two shots with our alpha damages. Now, uh, beside these bonuses, we have got some penalties and we have got some uh, weaknesses in destroyers. Uh, give me some example of these weaknesses, please. Alok. Okay, it can be, but there are more weaker properties we should focus on. Alok, say signature radius, but it's not so much big. It's not a, a prime weakness in a destroyer. Any more ideas? Mix up again. Kator? Uh, yeah, we only have a frigate-sized tank um, on a, a much larger, easier-to-target ship. Correct. 
in my book, I call it, we don't have a tank at all. So in means of effective hit point, we have got no tank. We have got lots of tongues, but we have got no tank. Any other? Lorraine? Just going by the ship's info pages, you can see very clearly that they've got penalties to rate of fire. So while you might have a huge alpha, your DPS is going to drop. Yes. This is one of the uh, primary weaknesses in destroyers. We have got a very strong alpha, but in means of damage per second, we are uh, considerably weak. We are better than most of the frigates in the game, uh, but we are uh, also lower than other hull types. But uh, our alpha is our uh, most effective weapon and advantage against any uh, hostiles, and our sheer numbers will help us to utilize them this uh, property to melt down animals with just one or two shots. And because you have got a very high alpha rate, before those ships get any logistic support, you can get them easily. This alpha strike strategy is uh, used with uh, other bigger hull fleets, like with alpha uh, battleship fleets in NUSEC. For example, in my uh, my alt is in the Northern Coalition, and we are using Maelstorm Alpha fleets. Uh, in large fleet engagements, usually your fleet have uh, logistic supports, and uh, even you get primary, if you get like uh, eight, nine logistic ships, wrap your shield or armor, uh, you will not uh, get blast, uh, destroyed or melted down. So, uh, even in the upper level, uh, people use this tactic to take care of heavy logistic support. You get the ship with one or two shots so that logis logistic ships don't have time to provide necessary wrapping to that target. Because uh, when you target a ship and give the first salvo, uh, it needs at least 10 to 15 seconds for other logistic ships I'm talking about the big fleets, not the small fleets. It's the general information. Uh, requires a, a considerable time. And within this short period, in less than 20 seconds, you will uh, deploy at least one or two salvos on any enemy with whole fleet strength, and you can uh, kill that target with your alpha strike. So that's a viable tactic uh, in different hoods and different strategies with, uh, within your fleets. Today, we will use cheap uh, destroyers uh, to utilize these tactics on our uh, low-sec uh, hostile targets. So that's the most important thing in uh, Wolfpack with destroyers. If you are fitting a destroyer for Wolfpack, the primary thing you should focus on uh, should be your alpha strike. Uh, with a decent skilled characters, rigs and necessary little bit uh, expensive modules, not I'm talking about the faction ones, but I'm talking about uh, take two guns and faction ammo, you can easily get more than thousand uh, alpha strike from a treasure. So, today we will have a lower one, but consider this that you have got a 30 ship with more than uh, 1000 alpha strike damage, so each of your attack will be at least more than 30,000 case, and this will melt down uh, lots of ships in seconds in game. So, this tactic is not only for destroyers, but uh, for other kind of ships. Now, uh, basically, we don't have any d defense, so first we focus on our uh, most important strength, our damage amount. So, we try to get our targets as fast as we can. Now, if we have something with a little bit more tank, that is uh, enough to get at least one or two salvos from destroyers, then we will utilize our uh, secondary uh, Secondary method of protection, E-War. Now, uh, some of the destroyers, like the mine, I'm using the Amar destroyer, it don't have a mid-slot. It only got a one mid-slot. So, no worries. The only thing you should have in your mid-slot 
Uh, the important thing is the afterburner. So you should first at least have an afterburner in your mid slots. So, before I talk about the other modes, why afterburner? Why I didn't say micro warp drive? Any ideas? Handau? Hondoa, please give me an answer. Okay, Hondoa say give speed tank without the signature penalty on of the micro warp drive. Uh, it's partially true, partially uh, not wrong, but viable. Let, let's say uh, we are not using micro warp drive because it increases your signature radius and they can look you fast. Uh, we are not going to use speed tank as part of our uh, tactic uh, because our uh, objective is to destroy our enemies before they even lock us. We need some kind of speed bonus uh, and afterburner is sufficient for that. But if you if we uh, fit a micro warp drive, this will increase our signature radius five times, 500 percentage times than our normal, so it makes our target to lock us faster. So this is not a friendly thing for us. Now, you fit your afterburner, and if you have another additional one or two slots, uh, depending on your uh, objective in the fleet, you may either use uh, EVOR modules, like tracking disruptors and uh, sensor dampeners, or you can fit uh, a sensor booster. Now, indifferently, in our Hydra Frigate fleets, I told you not to fit a sensor booster uh, because their uh, their bonuses is not sufficient enough to make a change. But in our cases, we are focusing on our alpha damage and we are focusing on how fast we can apply this damage on the target. So in this case, uh, using a sensor booster uh, is a way uh, to shorten the period of locking time to, uh, and to apply your alpha damage on the target as soon as possible. So it's a viable option to use a sensor booster. Uh, and for secondarily, normally uh, in frigate fleets we can extend, uh, in a Hydra frigate fleet, we can extend the engagement up to five minutes or even more. Uh, and because you join uh, either one of my frigate drums, you saw this with the first hand. But in our destroyer fleet, our uh, target is to warp in. Our first uh, uh, tactic is to warp in a destination, engage our target within 20 to 30 seconds uh, and almost one minute durations and warp off because we don't want to be get locked and fired at once even. So we will uh, warp into destination, uh, put some alpha strikes, one or two shots, and warp off. So, uh, tracking disruptors uh, moves to secondary place when we consider the remote sensor dampeners. Uh, usually, uh, treasure is the best ship for wolfpacks because they've got the highest alpha in the game and they've got three mid slots uh, letting you to fit an afterburner, a sensor uh, booster and a remote sensor dampener. Uh, in our Hydra Frigate fleets we prefer uh, targeting range but uh, in our uh, wolfpack uh, destroyer fleets we prefer signature uh, radius penalty scripts because uh, we want to uh, disengage before our enemy locks us. So we try to uh, increase the duration uh, of the locking time for our enemies. That's why we prefer remote sensor dampeners with signature radius bonuses. Well, this is for the engagements that we warp into the engagement field and warp off. Uh, because this is a fleet, uh, we may engage people on gate and we may engage people uh, when they drop on our location. In such cases, 
either we quickly warp off, and if we decide to engage the enemy, when they land on us, or when we land directly at zero to their location, then you can switch to max targeting range and uh, move to your optimal range with your guns. In this case, you can use your targeting range script for remote sensor uh, dampeners. For uh, sensor boosters, as I said before, we want to lock as fast as we can. So, depending on the condition, it's better to use uh, locking scripts, uh, your signature radio scripts, so that you can uh, increase your scan resolution and lock your targets faster. Uh, targeting range bonus script for sensor boosters uh, can be useful when we are uh, camping a gate. You can move to a high orbit and switch to long range weapons and uh, um, in that case, you may prefer to use uh, targeting range bonus scripts. Deciding which one to use uh, is depending on your self-awareness. Uh, you will be aware of what kind of engagement we are going to have. For example, if you are warping in a location where we want to, uh, to start an alpha strike, uh, you should prefer signature radio scripts. You are not going to warm for this. You should think that yourself. Uh, if you are on a gate and move in a high orbit, a longer orbit, to trap someone, you may prefer, if you are out of your targeting range, you may prefer to move to targeting range scripts. Uh, it depends all on your self-awareness. You should evaluate the condition and uh, decide what script to use. Also, that is the same for uh, remote sensor dampeners. If we are on a gate or an, on a location and our enemy engages us uh, by warping on our location or jumping through a gate on us in the same grid, well, you, may, uh, you should move out of their range and you should utilize your targeting range scripts and uh, keep their targeting range below your optimal. Uh, this is the same tactic we use with the frigates. But... If we engage a target by warping uh, to a tactical bookmark and uh, give an alpha strike, uh, target uh, scan resolution script for sensor booster and uh, scan resolution penalty script for remote sensor dampener should be your choice. Uh, you may not have the skills to use an, uh, either of the uh, dampener or booster. Then you may uh, switch to a tracking disruptor. And tracking disruptor uh, will be useful if our engagement is extended more than 30 seconds. So that's why the perfect treasure fit for Wolfpack includes an afterburner and a uh, remote sensor dampener and a sensor booster in their, in their mid-fleet. For uh, other destroyers, uh, if you have confusion to pick which one to fit in, uh, you should look at our tactic. Our focused strength is on alpha strike, so you should focus anything that will support your alpha strike. In this case, your first choice should be sensor booster. So if you got two mid slots, always put an afterburner. This is the first room. Then uh, place a sensor booster so that you can lock up fast enough to join the alpha strike. Well, this mostly covered the mid slots. Uh, I will answer the question for you. You may ask me, are, aren't we going to use any tech link modules? Well. Uh, you can forget about warp scramblers because warp scramblers uh, affect uh, on short range and warp scramblers affect the micro warp drive shifts. Now, let's consider the, our hostile targets. Uh, if you look at any frigate ships, including the Tech 2 ones, uh, our fleet's alpha strike is sufficient to get them in, in just one salvo. So, in this case, uh, we can lock in less than 10 seconds, and with one shot, we can kill them. So, having a warp scrambler to disable their micro warp drive in the short range is not something we will need of. So, you may forget about it. You may also remove wipe from this uh, uh, setting because of the same reason. But when it comes to warp disruptors, in some cases, 
our engagement will extend more than 30 seconds. In such cases, having one or two warp disruptors will be sufficient enough to uh, stop uh, our hostile targets, and probably those targets will be battle crews or battleships. Uh, I don't think that uh, uh, battle cruisers uh, will have a chance against us, but maybe some strongly tanked battleships could stand uh, more than one minute. In this case, having a few warp disruptors will be sufficient enough to stop them. And considering their big size and uh, low speed, uh, we don't need a scrambler, warp scrambler, uh, warp scrambler, and a web fire to take care of their speed. So. Uh, if you uh, objectively look all of these properties, you will see that uh, what will be your primary modules to fit in your mid slots. Now, considering the low slots, uh, as I said before, uh, our primary objective is to fit as much as guns uh, with the highest. Uh, Salvo Alpha Strike Demo. So use your low slots to either enhance your grids, your power or CPU grid to fit bigger guns, or you may optimize uh, your salvo damage by using weapon upgrades. In some cases, depending on your unique skill skill level, you may have different skills than another. Each player has got unique skills. Uh, maybe fitting bigger guns is uh, not better than fitting smaller guns with weapon upgrades. So you should also consider this. Uh, even if you don't have uh, sufficient grids, you may uh, fit, like for example, for projectiles, 250 millimeter guns, and use weapon upgrades to uh, increase your alpha. And this may be better than using uh, CPU or power grid upgrades and fitting bigger guns. So please also consider this fact while fitting your ships for Wolfpack destroyer classes. After all of those, if you have got sufficient slots, you may use a damage control unit. But the only place you will need a damage control unit where you will jump through a gate and engage a smart bombing group or a, uh, or a uh, stealth bomber. Uh, considering that we will be in low gate, the uh, only thing left is smart bombing ships. Well, your, if your skills are sufficient, your ship can take at least one smart mob uh, attack. And if you uh, are careful enough, you can easily warp off when you get this damage. So, using a damage control unit is tertiary and it's not very important. So try to focus always on uh, maximizing your damage. Now, these are the properties of the destroyer, and this is the uh, method to fit a proper destroyer for a Wolfpack class. Now, let's move to tactic. I, exp I give you some explanation during the fitting, but uh, let me uh, repeat it again. Our tactic is to engage our enemy from a distance at least 16 uh, k's away from them, and use our alpha strike. To get, uh, to get one or two targets and then disengage. And we repeat this tactic several times till we reduce the number of the hostiles uh, to where we can keep fighting on the field. So, uh, if you look at these two pictures about the Hydra Frigate Fleet and the Wolfpack Frigate Fleet, uh, Wolfpack Dest Destroyer Fleet, you will see uh, very big differences between them. So this is two separate tactic. Same principle including self-awareness, know what to use in one situation and following up the fleet movement from Mumble uh, is the thing that keep you online with the fleet uh, and uh, yeah. and that will be the uh, that, that should be your prime objective. Now, uh, let's talk about the upper, uh, uh, other situations. Uh, in most cases, we prefer to jump on our targets from a distance. What happens if we have engaged a target on a gate? Well, if we jump through, 
uh, and uh, uh, jump on a gate camp, something like this. While you are uh, aligning to a destination, you should immediately uh, lock the primary target. In destroyer fleets, the first thing uh, you will hear from an FC will be the primary. So the first thing you should focus in after aligning your ship to a celestial or broadcasted uh, through com or in-game system uh, destination, uh, at the same time looking at the primary target. But don't stay there. Uh, lock as much as target you can have because you will see that before uh, you lock the second target, if we do it right, we will primary our target with alpha strike. We will destroy it with an, our alpha strike. So if we engage someone on the gate, and if there is no smart bombs and we decide to keep engaging, uh, you should quickly lock your target while aligning to a destination. Hit your afterburner to have some speed. Uh, because we maybe decide to keep engaging and you may to burn some uh, destination, some distance between the hostiles and start firing as soon as possible. While doing this, you should also, if you have some EWAR modules like sensor dampeners or tracking disruptors, uh, and uh, I think that all of you know how to use them, uh, you should start using them according to either your assignment, for example, squad one uh, EWARS on this target or squad two tracking this, uh, sensor dampeners on this target, uh, without waiting any other command from the FC, if you didn't have any command, you should start using your EWAR module on the closest targets which threatens you. Uh, this is a little bit more different because we've got a little time in our most engagements, in differently than the frigate fleet, uh, you should not wait the command of the uh, fleet officers to utilize your uh, offensive EWAR modules on targets. How you will pick the target for EWARs? Very simple. Uh, first of all, pick the one that you can affect with your EWAR module. Don't ask me which module I should use on what kind of ships. You should know it. Uh, and activate that module as soon as possible. The one uh, which uh, is closest to you and gives you the most threat. In doesn't if everyone uh, distribute their EWAR on uh, those targets, uh, every one of the uh, ships in that engagement will have sufficient EWAR on their tails. Now, uh, these are the two basic tactics. By the way, you should have all kind of ammunition, both long-range, short-range, and mid-range in your hulls, because according uh, to situation, uh, fleet commander uh, can ask you to load different range ammunition. Normally, you should have at least 15, 16 Ks of range. This is the standard engagement range. Uh, but, for example, when we are traveling, when someone lands on us, uh, you, you may prefer to use short-range ammunition. In all cases, try to stay at least 10 Ks away from your target to aid any small chances. But... In these cases, you should also use your self-awareness again, because if you are engaging uh, cruiser-sized ships and they are very close to you and you don't have time to uh, get any uh, distance between them, it's your responsibility to switch short-range ammunition. Uh, if you are an, an armor ship, it's very easy to change your lens. In a uh, projectile ship, it depends on you. You should decide uh, how long the engagement will, will take. If it is going to extent you may switch to a shorter range and if you uh, if you say that you can put a range in this target you can stay with your current range again it's the part of the self awareness uh, concept in most of the hydro tactics including hydro frigate and wolfpack destroyers uh, in different from the standard uni fleet doctrine uh, your commander is not responsible from your actions each squad member is responsible of their squad commander, and each, squ each squad commander is responsible 
uh, about their win commander and it goes up like this so uh, none of your squad commanders or wing commander will uh, wrap things up for you uh, because in this kind of fleets uh, in most cases it's not that uh, common in the destroyer fleets but in most cases uh, you will be assigned to different locations with your squad and you should follow your squad orders and sh you should keep up with your squad commander and in each squad you should have a D scanner you should have a local watcher and you should have a drone watcher uh, for example if you are a drone watcher or a squad if you see drones you should warn your squad by typing it in your squad chat if you are a local watcher you should uh, type in your squad chat about the local spike if you're a discon watcher and if you see something that not fit in the picture you should warn about your squad commander so it's working a little bit different than standard fleet actions we will use open comm channels during the operation uh, because uh, we are we are going to move very fast and we want all of you to follow these commands and uh, know aware of what we are going to do and you should prepare yourself accordingly there are not always going to be fleet warps they are not always going to be uh, squad warps you will have squad orders like squad one go to this gate uh, and uh, hold an offensive gate cap or jump through and those kind of things and you should catch up with those uh, it's a very active fleet composition and you carry lots of uh, most of responsibilities in this uh, structure. Now, these are the basic of our tactics and how we should prepare our ship. If anyone has any questions about the general of these subjects, please fix up in the class. We'll give word to everyone in Mumble and you can speak in Mumble and ask questions starting with Arak. Please speak. Arok asks, rigs are still allowed. Now, uh, according to uh, EV Uni SOP, you can use rigs uh, in peacetime. But if we have a war, active war, you cannot use rigs. Well, considering our situation, I think the war will not be active for a few hours. So it's, we can't officially uh, engage war targets and I, they can't officially engage us. Uh, this is a little bit gray area. I don't know if we can use uh, rigs during this, uh, this startup time. But when the war starts, you can't fly a rigged ship. Uh, anything below the cruiser size. I think the battle cruiser and battleship could be rigged in all time. So, any other questions? Yes, Nick. Uh, this fleet is only for destroyers and uh, selected scouts. You should be f uh, have a destroyer with necessary skills and experience your both character skills and experience in your personality, uh, and you should know the concept of the uh, fleet from the uh, scheduled uh, notes. You may come with the uh, destroyer, uh, but as I said before, it will be different than the regular fleets, and your squad commander will not follow whether you are with the fleet or not. You should be responsible to follow us. You can listen it and you can uh, join it if you can fit a ship within 10 minutes. Now, any more questions? And as well, eh? you can use Mumble if you want. If you have mic, okay. Please type your question in the class, and if there are no more questions, I will start to uh, prepare the fleet. Then we have a little bio after we assemble the fleet and departure. I don't want to keep spinning and keep you spinning in the station. So I want everyone to X up in class channel uh, if you want to uh, be a part of this fleet. I want to have a headcount. By the way, your question NS Wally have not taken your class but Agony. Uh, not have your class, but agony, it is okay to participate. Yes, and as well, that's proper. 
Now give me a second to have a head count, guys. Okay, we got around 20 people. Now, let's start. Uh, I want all uh, people with the leadership skills to X up in the class channel with their destroyers type. Leadership, please X up in the class channel. Okay, Margaret, please get Pon, Igaro, and Quakes uh, as squad commanders, also and as Wally for the fourth squad, please. Okay, uh, actually, this regards squad four. Three squad is sufficient. Take the first three person in the class as squad commanders, please. Sorry, and as Wally, don't have mic. I will move to you as squad member. Okay, all the treasures, except in the class channel, please. All the treasures. Uh, every squad commander, please take two from the list. Take two person from the list. Every squad commanders, invite two person to your squad. Squad one and squad three, invite three person, please. Anyone with the treasure not invited yet, please accept. If you are not invited yet with the treasure, accept. Brow and Charlie Wings get two more treasures, please, from the list. Command to this Igarua accidentally took four members. No problem. Not invited yet, please accept again for the treasure. Only the treasure first. Guys, get one more members, please. Everyone in your squad got four members. One for each squad. Come, get one more treasure pilot from the class channel, please. I think Arok Salabi is available. Sorry, I pronounced your name wrong. Okay. Uh... Let's see rest of the destroyers, please. If you are not inviting the fleet, everyone except now. Okay, squad commands, keep uh, inviting, fill up your squads. Fill up your squads, guys. Invite everyone. Pawn, quick quicks, invite more people, please. Igor, that's enough for you. That's enough for you, quick wax. Pond, please invite the rest of the people left. If you don't get the invite, accept again. If you don't get an invite, accept again. Pond, invite the rest of the people Xing up in the channel. Quick wax and Igor, that's enough for your squads. Migrant, please invite the rest of the people to squad uh, 3. Charlie Wing, please. Is anyone left outside any more Xs? Is everyone invited? Okay, I think that's all. Anyone left outside for the final time? Okay, I think that's enough. Let's find a uh, channel for us. Uh, everyone, move to Alpha Wing. Move to Alpha Wing in Mumble, please. The communication move to fleet chat. 